So in our last unit, we built our frames. As you can see, we have our wonderful blue and pink frame. Now, for those of you that have the wrong color floats, if you're working with friends, you can trade, so you can either have matching or different floats. But now that unit one is complete, the next step for us is to go ahead and build our motor assemblies. For this unit, what we'll need is our electric motors, our film canisters, our wax and electrical tape, and then after that we'll need the props and some of the other nuts. All of this is laid out in the beginning of Unit 2 in your manual. So the first part of this is taping up the motors so that the wax that we use doesn't get into the motors. Some people have a tendency to just grab the tape and just start throwing tape all over the place. We even have some of our instructors who feel that's an okay way to go. The key to this is less tape is more. Okay? The whole idea is that you're putting tape around this motor and then that taped motor needs to fit inside this canister. There's not a ton of extra room. So the more tape you put in, the less leeway you have for other things later on down the line to go wrong. So the least amount of tape you use, the better off you're going to be. So we'll walk you through that process and how to do it and then go ahead and seal them up. Excellent. Doing this taping is a little bit monotonous. You end up needing about 24 to 30 one inch pieces of tape. Okay. I don't recommend you cut them all at once, but you may want to get five one inch pieces of tape ready. Uh, now that you have your frames built, they are very good for holding one inch pieces of tape. Perfect. So you can go ahead and make a series of one inch pieces of tape and set them aside. First thing we're going to do is pick up one of your motors. If you look on the white side, the cap side of that motor, you'll see that there is a red dot. The red dot is the positive terminal of the motor. We want to make sure that when we wire these motors up, they're going to go the way we want them to go. So, we're also about to cover the whole back end of this motor with black tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Sharpie marker and mark the terminal next to the red dot. We're going to mark it in this case with the black marker. Okay, and you're going to want to do that to all three motors before you forget and tape a motor that you haven't marked. If you lose the markings on your motors, which one of these is the positive terminal, you can look at the side of the casing. This side of the casing just has a single oval opening. This side has the oval opening plus these two notches. Those two notches are at the negative terminal. Therefore, if you can pick up those two through the tape, you know that the opposite one is your positive terminal. So now, what we want to do is put tape around the back of that motor, covering up any of the holes that go to the inside of the motor. We'd like to avoid taping over the part where the shaft comes out, where that little bearing and the nub of the shaft is on that end, and on the other side, where the shaft and the bearing are. So what we really want to do is cover those holes, these holes, and then the motors on the side. What you'll end up having is a big disc of floppy tape all out to the side like that. So then go put your next one, next one, and next one. Cover all of that around the end. Leaving the raised part out? Leaving the raised part out. So as I said earlier, there are a lot of different ways to accomplish this. Some of them are quicker. Um, some of them are a lot less tedious. Personally, none of them are better. They may be as good, but none of them are better. So now, what you're going to want to do is take your pair of scissors and trim that off. Now, what you want to do is make sure that as you do that, the edge of your blade is along the edge of the motor, which means you're going to cut backwards, right? There you go. If you, want it, if you have a tendency to cut like this, you'll have that gap. If you cut backwards, the flat of the blade rides right along the edge of the motor and will give you a nice trim cut as you go around the edge. 
and now you're just going to repeat that exact same process on the other side of the motor. So people often ask me, hey, can I put tape over the back or can I just punch the shaft through the tape? And the answer to that is yes. But it comes down to every little bit of friction that we put on that shaft, whether it's, you eh, well, it's not really much at all or it's a lot, it takes away from the power of the sea perch. So the way I look at it is if I can spend an extra 30 seconds here and not have any wear that slows down the vehicle, it's worth that bit of time to me. Now, the next step, all we're going to do is put a single layer of tape all the way around. You can do it in two ways. You can cut two strips and put them parallel or do one continuous spiral down the motor. All right. As you do it, you'll want to start with about an eighth of an inch overlap, pull it tight, and you'll see the tape rolls with that tension right over the lip. Oh, yeah. Okay, and seals everything in. Okay, so now you have two options. We can cut that or just stretch it down to do the other side. And it just curves right over the top. Curves right over the top, covers up anything that wasn't pristine, and then we'll just snip that last little bit. Okay? And now what you have is a motor that we have all of these holes covered. So this part of silver that's showing is fine as yeah, long as it's cover. not one of these holes. Excellent. Okay? And now we repeat that for the other two motors in each of our kits.